as Linda said, I'm going to be talking about uh, collaborative care for or clinical care coordination for patients with complex mental health needs in general practice. Um, I'm a research fellow in the Department of General Practice at the University of Melbourne and disclosure, I'm not a nurse, so please don't ask me any nursing questions. Um, so this is just to give you a bit of an idea. Um, our team is the Integ Integrated Mental Health Research Program um, and we have been thinking a lot over the last 15 odd years about what depression and mental health care looks like in general practice and this is just to give you an idea of um, all of the various things that we've been doing over the last 15 years trying to come up with better ways of managing mental health in general practice. Um, and one of the studies that we did in the mid-2000s was reorder and that was a really intensive study in half a dozen general practices uh, in Victoria and Tasmania um, where we spent a year in each one looking um, at everything that happens to do with um, mental health care and speaking to everyone who was involved and some of the um, things that we found out were that mental health is seen as an integral part of primary care um, and whole person care um, but it's really burdensome due to the magnitude of the problem so up to half the people coming into a general practice waiting room will have some mental health symptoms um, and GPs and practice nurses and practice staff find that really overwhelming to deal with. A lot of GPs saw practice nurses as an avenue for delivering some depression care but it was really informal and practice nurses reported the same thing that they were doing a lot of this work um, but not being recognised for it and not having the support and the structure to do it so they found that a lot of their role was gathering information and just passing it on to the GP who would then take responsibility for the formal depression care. We spoke to some of the patients and um, the vast majority of them said that they would be really happy for a practice nurse to be involved in their depression care um, and that they'd be happy to receive a follow-up phone call from a practice nurse um, after seeing the GP. So um, there was a lot of interest in having practice nurses involved more formally in depression care um, and that wasn't happening at the time. Um, another really important study that we did was the Diamond Project uh, which is a 10 year longitudinal study of um, about 800 patients in um, general practice across Victoria with depressive symptoms um, and they were aged 18 to 75 and we've got a lot of information from them. Uh, about their depressive symptoms, their uh, other mental health problems and also their lifestyle generally. Uh, and one of the important things that we found out from Diamond was that the vast majority of people in primary care will experience a mild um, symptom trajectory over time. So they have mild symptoms, they tend to stay there, they're not at risk of, of getting worse. But there's a group of people in the red line um, at the top there who who have very severe and persistent um, depressive symptoms and they also have a whole host of uh, social and physical comorbidities um, and mental health comorbidities as well. So they tend to be socially isolated, uh, they have a lot of financial strain, um, they often have a history of trauma inc including things like um, childhood sexual abuse, uh, they, have, they tend to have a lot of chronic physical illnesses and they are often reporting polypharmacy. And so we started thinking about what, are, what can we do with all of this information where we're seeing that um, practices are finding mental health care really overwhelming, that there's this group of patients that have all of this stuff going on that are not really um, getting any better over time currently and what sort of way that we might be able to improve the system. Um, so we started work on the Target D study which um, is a randomised control trial that's just in its last phases of data collection at the moment. I won't talk through in detail but basically patients in the waiting room complete a brief survey and they're randomised to receive either the trial intervention or usual care. Um, in completing the survey their, their risk of um, chronic depressive symptoms is identified and so they're triaged into one of three symptom severity groups being mild, moderate or severe. For the people who are identified as, having, as being likely to have um, severe and chronic depressive symptoms, they're offered a um, course of nurse-led collaborative care for their depression. Um, and that involves <coughs> the four principles of um, collaborative care that have been published previously. So uh, it's a really multi-professional multi approach. There's a structured plan uh, that's developed over a series of scheduled follow-ups. Um, and the idea is to enhance interprofessional communication. 
So what does the nurse do in Target D? Um, they're leading a patient-centred collaborative care approach to improving depressive symptoms and following the principles of motivational interviewing and doing that. Uh, the idea is that the nurse is really there to support the patient to develop and implement their own treatment plan. Um, and the nurse is um, assisting the patient to set goals of what they want to achieve to improve their mental health, to identify some options to achieve those goals. And the option might be that they're really happy with their current treatment and they want to continue that, or they might want to supplement it with something, or they might want to try something completely new. And the nurse helps them to kind of work those things through um, to help the patient to agree on some actions to take. And over the course of eight appointments over 12 weeks, to review um, how those actions are going and refine them if needed. Um, the important thing the nurse is doing is liaising with the GP throughout this process, um, particularly around medication and any referrals and helping to facilitate those referrals uh, where necessary. Also just um, keeping the GP in the loop and often the patients will disclose things that the GP isn't aware of and so um, the nurse can help kind of integrate that into the um, whole person care. So our experiences to date, we've had five nurses um, engaged in the Target D approach to care uh, with an average of 16 years experience, including in primary care, but also hospital community settings, um, a whole raft of experience that the nurses brought to the role. Um, none of the nurses had had any formal mental health training previously. Um, and in the course of Target D, they attended a two day workshop where they were um, got information about the Target D project as a whole, their role within it, and uh, one day on learning some motivational interviewing skills. So it was a really um, brief um, training that they went through. Um, the five nurses worked with 92 primary care patients in Melbourne who were identified as having severe depressive symptoms. Um, the, the patients had completed a questionnaire which asked them about their depressive symptoms, also their lifestyle, their income, their general health, um, a few other bits and pieces. The patient's responses to the survey reflected back to them at the time of completing it um, with the text, things seem to be difficult for you in these areas right now. And depending on their scores on each item, they'll see you know, things might be difficult for them with their, um, with their income or things might be difficult for you in um, your general health and illness, um, chronic illness. Um, and the, the patient then gets the option to select two of those areas that they really want to prioritise, the things that are really difficult for them. Um, and the idea behind that is really that most of these patients have a lot of different things going on at the moment and it's very overwhelming to try and address everything at once. Um, and it's kind of setting them up for failure. So let's pick a couple of things that you can work on to start with uh, and then we can get things happening there and once things are okay, you can choose a couple of other things that you want to work on. Um, so the patients were in their mid-30s, um, no surprise, the majority of them were women, uh, fairly highly educated and um, reasonably well employed and not naive to the mental health system at all. So a fair amount of them were currently taking antidepressants um, and currently seeing a psychologist and uh, over half had seen a psychologist in the past. Um, and despite that, <coughs> they're still identified as having chronic and severe mental health problems. Uh, so this graph um, is just showing the areas in the survey that uh, were identified as being difficult for patients in the light pink colour. So you can see almost everyone has almost everything. Um, and the dark colour there is the areas that they have selected to prioritise that they really want to work on. So you can see they're not always prioritising the most common areas of difficulty. Um, Mood and energy are the most common areas that are identified as being difficult for people, but income and their general health are the things that they really want to focus on and they, they're the things that they feel are really driving their um, mental health problems. So within each of those areas, the nurse then helps the patient to set some goals, what they want to achieve in each of those areas. Um, and they set a, a range of goals in relation to each priority priority area and identified a lot of different options for improving and working towards those goals, which included but was certainly not limited to seeking formal help. Um, more often than not, they wanted to kind of take control and use self-help strategies and, um, and things available to them in the community. Um, <clears throat> so the nurse was kind of helping them to identify and refine some of those options. 
um, across all of the different priority areas, improving sleep and improving exercise were two goals um, that patients commonly reported. And so, it, you know, help, having the nurse there to identify ways of working towards um, achieving those goals kind of had effects, had flow on effects across all the different priority er all the areas of difficulty that patients are experiencing. So we spoke to some of the nurses about how they felt in doing this with minimal training, um, helping people with quite complex mental health problems come up with a plan to address um, the areas that they want to work on. Um, and they found it really rewarding, really challenging. Um, and you can see this uh, nurse is quite the wordsmith. Um, but part social work, part counsellor, part medical profession, professional, part confidant. Um, a lot of challenges, um, but really it's about helping people to help themselves, um, igniting within the participant the fire that had previously burned down. It was interesting that the most challenging thing that um, the nurses found about this collaborative care was the collaborative bit of it and getting the GPs to engage in the process. So the patients and the nurses were very good at collaborating together and coming up with a plan to work uh, on the patient's mental health. But the, the nurses found it very difficult to get time with the GPs um, to put that into practice. Um, and there's a lot of follow up. So um, the, the nurses' time was very, um, very much taken up with all of that administrative side of chasing GPs rather than spending time with patients. Um, and I think part of that is a reflection of the fact that this is done in the context of research, so the, the nurse is not embedded within the practice. And ideally, if it was to be rolled out as part of routine care, there would be that relationship with the GP that would make that a bit easier. From the patient perspective, um, the thing that they really loved about this model of care was the practical support. They found nurses much more practical than other health professionals that they'd seen in the past who just wanted them to talk about their feelings and whatever. They found that the nurses would take practical steps to actually help them, um, whether that was finding a mover, um, which this person, the thing that was really bothering him was um, chronic back pain and his house was very cold and not helping with the pain. Um, so then, and he w wasn't sure that he'd be able to afford to move. And so the nurse found an affordable mover in his area and that was the thing that he needed um, to improve his mental health. Um, or finding a psychologist that actually specialised in the area that the patient needed and that she got along with. She'd seen a lot of psychologists in the past and hadn't had a good connection with any of them and so then the nurse was able to facilitate a referral to someone that, um, that the patient responded well to. They found it a really refreshing change along the same lines <clears throat> to dealing with the myriad of uh, mental health professionals that they'd spoken to in the past. Um, again, very practical, not asking people to do a million things at once, just selecting a couple of, of things to focus on. Um, and it was interesting that you know the patients, as well as GPs and other um, health professionals, had never really considered a nurse as being an important part of their mental health care. And so this kind of opened up the idea that there are other people to see. It doesn't have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist to help with mental health. And they found it really useful because they do have a lot of problems with multimorbidity and nurse, that's what nurses do. Um, and so they, they really loved the idea that they could talk to someone who understood the physical health problems that they were having as well and could help them navigate the system rather than having to talk to different people about all their different issues. Um, so in conclusion, uh, we found that after really brief training, um, the nurses were able to implement a motivational interviewing informed approach to collaborative care. Um, they found it very challenging, very re rewarding, and the patients found that it was very appropriate and very helpful. Um, the thing that we don't have at this stage is whether it's effective. So people like it, we don't know if it works, and um, we'll be back uh, next year with that information. But um, if the model of care is effective in reducing depressive symptoms, improving quality of life, it could help reduce some of the burden of depression um, at both the individual and system levels. Are quite a, bit of a shift in the approach to mental health care. Uh, and we're currently testing this model care at a larger scale across um, three states or three PHNs um, across the Eastern Seaboard, uh, funded by the Department of Health. Knowledge funding and just to promote a
PhD students work if you're interested. I have some flyers as well that you can come and grab if you're interested in dementia.